This is Backstage Pass, Arizona's only entertainment variety show. Tell your friends about the show because it's very important. We are Arizona Entertainment and National Entertainment coming together to bring back programming to the people of Arizona, something that you may want to see. Thank you. I'm, I'm David Spade. I'm 10 years old. <laughs> Kidding, ten and a half. You know, I gotta tell you, gotta tell you something before I start. Dan Horn is gonna be on later tonight. And a funny thing happened. We went down to Piano Wallace and Latimer. I went down with them yesterday. And I went down to the studio, and Dan's like very popular down there with the girls. We go through the lobby, and uh, these girls, like it's a brownie troop 57. These girls, Dan walks in, I'm behind him, they're all going, oh, Dan Horn, no, stallion, oh, uh, uh, uh. And I'm going, Dan, you're kind of a stud mule around here, aren't you? And he's going, oh, you know. And then this one girl goes, hi, Dan. And he goes, hi, Susie. And I go, Susie, how do you know her? And he goes, I don't, okay? And then about two minutes later, I hear his voice behind this door. And I hear him go, hey, Susie, I'll give you a quarter if you pull up your dress. And I go, Dan! He goes, I'm just kidding. I'll give her a dollar. So, uh, is he here? <laughs> I told him I'd tell that story because it was true. Uh, this is my buddy Orson. Orson, give everybody a big hello, all right? Right into the microphone here. Orson was taking a little nap. I'm sorry that we had to get you up. Yeah, me too. Right. Can you say hello? Uh... Excuse me. Yeah, come on. Just give us, give him a big hello, all right? I don't feel up to it. What's the problem here tonight? I'm kind of depressed. Depressed? Yeah. I just found out Elsie the cow is missing. Elsie the cow? Is missing. Yeah, I saw her picture on a milk carton. <laughs> it's supposed to be there, okay? Look, I tell you what, Orson, I'd like to interview you for the audience a little bit tonight. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? There's a cute lady sitting there. Yeah, that's not what we're here for. Ah, Orson, come on. We have to get on with the show. I want to talk to her. No. All right, now let me ask you a couple of questions here. You're very old, aren't you? Hey, what's your name? Orson. What? How old are you? I'm 91. 91? 91 years old? That is terrific. I mean, you don't even look it. So what is your secret? Hey. Look, when the show is over... Orson, what? How did you get to be so old? And you'll shut up. I'll show you. <clears throat> you ever, I live in Scottsdale. When I go to Phoenix, the worst part about coming back is, into Scottsdale is seeing that sign that says, Now leaving Phoenix. Adios, amigos. Why? We're not in Mexico. Why do we need this Spanish tagline? All right, now leaving Phoenix would be enough for me. When you're in France, it's say, now leaving Paris. Adios, amigos. No, why here? Why are we cursed? I didn't get to vote on Proposition 101, the Amigos Bill. Uh, Mud bog. You ever hear this guy on the radio? Does he annoy you? All right, now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from Phoenix, but what I'm not is I'm not a backward-ass country fuck like the other gentleman. And uh, I don't have David on the belt. And uh, I, don't, I don't get into this guy. And the radio, he's obnoxious. You'll hear him about every six months, right? Mud bug. Captain Crunch. Tractor Toe. Big fucking trucks with big fucking tires and a lot of fucking mud. <laughs> hey, that sounds like fun. Honey, grab your coat and chapeau. <laughs> Could you picture this guy growing up, right? He's about 10 years old, sitting around the dinner table. Mom, dad, pass the potatoes, big fucking potatoes, and a lot of fucking gravy. I can't picture that either. Uh, here's, a, here's a present for your Copenhagen tobacco chewing friends that don't want to ring in their pocket. It's cope on a rope. <laughs> hey, guess what? That's what. Don't you hate kids? You know, when I was a kid, I was the biggest pain in the ass, and I always pulled that stuff on my mom, and she has to go along with it because she's my mom, you know? And I pulled this thing a, a hundred times a day, and my brother and I did this. It was so fun. I'm sure you did this. We get in a back dark hallway where no one could see us. My brother Andy, he was a little older than me. I was about seven. He was nine. 
you know, you, you get back there and go, Mom, Mom, come here quick, Annie's hurt, emergency. She'd run back and I'd clothesline her. <laughs> Can do that? She'd get up, oh you, oh, you boys, go make dinner. <laughs> She's a neat lady. She never caught on to that one, though. And she used to... Oh, <laughs> it's my dad. Uh, here it is. My, she used to tell me stuff. Here's a question I'm going to ask you, all right? She told me. I, I believe this stuff. If you rub your feet really hard on shag carpet and jump in a bathtub full of water, will you electrocute yourself? <laughs> yes. She told me yes, okay? And the tragic part was that I believed her. So I'd like... I'd call this back later, she'd be taking a bath, and I'd go, Mom, you better let me go to that movie or I'll jump in there and kill us both. <laughs> <laughs> you people don't drink and drive, do you? Yeah. Oh, am I like the only one? <laughs> okay, because I had to stop drinking and driving because I went to defensive driving school and they scared me out of it with movies like Wheels of Tragedy, Mechanized Death, Red Asphalt, The Last Prom. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bother me to see these gory movies, right? It, it does bother me with the people who make them get a camera and follow me down Scottsdale Road. Um, just waiting for the next feature film. So, fortunately in Scottsdale, where I'm from, they've got a program where if you're too drunk to drive, you get a free ride. Great. So I called him the other day and I said, Hello? <sighs> yeah, um, I'm too drunk to drive. Can you take me to work? <laughs> Thank you. See, they have to. You guys want to hear something funny? Yes, Dave, please, soon, something. <laughs> Last Tuesday was National Corn Day, a week ago. It's true, it was on my Ziggy calendar. I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, so I wanted to do my part for this Overlook Vegetable, so I put together a little medley. I'll have Casey Kasem introduce it, the guy with the square head. Hi, I'm Casey Kasem, and welcome to American Top 40. Checking in at number five, the boss, Bruce Springsteen. A man and his guitar. A man who likes to call his guitar his own. He's just like you, and he's just like me. He's just a guy. He's not your boss, and he's not my boss. He's everybody's boss. He's the boss. Corn in the USA, I grow. Corn in the USA, I'm a hard working farmer for the USDA. Took a chick in my daddy's pickup truck, she was just 13, but she knew how to shove. Corn. 